Welcome to the Fire and Earth Podcast with your hosts, Jason Mefford and Kathy Gruber. Fire and Earth, giving you the keys to unlock your limitless potential. Welcome to another episode of the Fire and Earth Podcast. I'm your co-host, Jason Mefford. And I am Kathy Groover, and we are going to have um, not too quick a conversation, but something popped up in my my world this week about emotions in the workplace. And so Jason and I are going to talk about what we think about that, how we can handle emotions in the workplace, and how we can use emotions sort of as a compass to let us know how things are working or not working in our lives. So I'm excited about this conversation. Perfect. Well, and, and what the what most of the world believes, right? So this is going to be a very quick episode. Right, because most people would say emotions do not belong in the workplace. Done. I'm Kathy but, Groover. I can be reached with <laughs> Kathy Groover. <laughs> okay, but that's not true, right? But that's no. that's something that we get told all the time, right? That the workplace is not a place for emotions. Yeah. Well, and here's the thing: it's fascinating. So the, the, there's multiple little arms of this, right? So I had a client who we were talking about how she handled a certain situation and she felt bad about an exchange. And when she went to talk about this exchange, she went with, you know, I feel this, I feel that, I feel this. And then she felt bad that she felt stuff. She didn't want to come across like she was whining, like she was complaining. She didn't want to make the other person feel bad. And I said, look, saying I feel this isn't a bad thing to say. And if you can back that up with, you know, the whole I statements, when this happened, I felt this or put the facts into it. Then the other thing that we started talking about, which is sort of an interesting arm to this is, you know, we still have this male female divide. And if men are leading and feel emotion, they're compassionate, they're passionate, they're sensitive, they're emotionally intelligent. If women feel emotions in the workplace, they're hysterical, they're a bitch, they're a baby, <laughs> they need to calm their butt down. You know, it's like, so wait, so we can't tear up over something that's sad, but if a guy does it, he's sensitive and you know, everyone's like, oh, he's so great. So I, I, I'm, this is changing. <laughs> it <laughs> is, is it is. Well, and that's oh, why this is a great topic to be discussing because it is, it is changing and it's, it's, it's a place where people have to kind of navigate through, right? right? I mean, and, and I think to me, you know, it's like, I mean, we've talked about this before that we're all emotional beings. The difference is, are you getting stuck in the emotion, right? Yes. Or are you feeling it and moving through it, right? And, yes. and, and what ends up happening is most people end up getting stuck in the emotion. And again, I mean, just stereotype, but women tend to feel more than men. Men tend to think more, right? I mean, there's that seems to be kind of one of the generalizations, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, but if we get stuck in whatever that emotion happens to be, then we do usually kind of switch over into that victim whiny kind of mindset, especially if it's a negative emotion, right? Like you hurt my feelings. Negative emotion, yeah. Right, you, th that we would consider to be negative, right? Or something that maybe we don't want to feel. And it's like, can we move to the point of being an observer and look at this really from an objective standpoint, uh -huh. or do we get stuck in that sadness, in that anger, in that, you know, whatever it happens to be? And 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 what are some of the ways, you know, again, that we can maybe do that, Kathy? Because I know you help you've helped people do that. Right. Well, what I what I was gonna say, I love that you said, you know, get stuck in it because we want to be with the feeling, not in the feeling, right? Mm -hmm. Feel it. What does that leave you to do? Because if you're angry about something, that is an indication that something happened in your environment or in your, in your sphere that doesn't work for you. At, we don't want to be reactive, right? We don't want to just go screaming down the hallway and start throwing things in business meetings and noticing that, oh, wow, I'm starting to feel angry. Why? Okay, well, so-and-so said something that seemed disrespectful to me. Okay, rather than yelling at them in that place of anger, can you be with that feeling and go, hey, you know, how did you feel about that exchange? To me, I, I told I told my client this. I said, to me, the greatest thing you could do is be curious. Um, she was having a weekly meeting with people and it just started to get disrespectful and kind of spinning their wheels and nothing was happening. And she went out of, you know, I don't feel like it. She felt like she was hysterical. Who knows if she was or not? I wasn't there. And I said, well, what would it have looked like had you <clears throat> started the conversation with, hey, you know, I'm just curious, how do you feel that these meetings have been going? Because it turns out this other person also thought they weren't 
having a point and they were also spinning their wheels. So you're not always the only one feeling that. So often if you're feeling something that is a barometer of what's happening around you and you're probably not the only one. So if you can be with the emotion and use it as a barometer and not in it, wait till you're out of that storm of emotion before you act on it or else then you become reactive, which is not what we want, right? We want responsive, not reactive. Uh, so that's what I would think, you know, if you can take a step back and to me, taking a pause is not a bad thing. You know, people feel like they have to respond or react right away. Um, you know, let's say someone asks you a question and you don't know the answer. You don't have to stand there and try to figure it out right there. It's totally okay to go, wow, that's actually a really interesting point. I don't know the answer to that right now. Let me get back to you on that. And then actually get back to the person rather than starting to feel uncomfortable or feeling shame or feeling whatever, you know, pause. <laughs> it's okay. You don't have to, you don't have to be you know, moving all the time. It's okay to take that pause and revisit that thing. I think that's the other thing we rush through stuff and we don't give our chance to our, ourselves a chance to be with it rather than in it well it's interesting because you mentioned the pause too right is that i think a lot of times especially when somebody says something that's kind of hurtful right or, or kind of out of line we feel like we have to react we have we have to put something back yeah. out there like how dare you do that right, right. Um, but but one of the one of the tips and little tools to kind of do is take take that pause, because, I, you know, as you were talking about that, I was I was having, you know, images of things that have happened to me before where, you know, a lot of times when you just kind of take the pause, I mean, because when somebody says that something like that, your body kind of reacts, right, and they can feel the energy that you're putting off. And I don't know how many times when I've taken a pause like that. All of a sudden, the other person goes, oh, shit, I just said something out of line, <laughs> right? right? And all of a sudden, before you even respond, if you pause, they they kind of stop and go, oh, uh, I apologize about that. Right. I, that was probably a little out of line or the, the way you reacted is not, you know, maybe, maybe the words I said doesn't doesn't show the intention behind it right because uh -huh. obviously whatever I said it appears just hurt your feelings and it was not my intention to hurt your feelings yep. right so it allows both both of the people to be a little bit more mature emotionally about that and start having the conversation and start asking the questions yeah. right because that was another thing that you were talking about is some of those questions when you start asking those questions, it allows you to move to the point of the observer. Yes. Right. So you're moving yourself out of being in the emotion. Mm -hmm. Now you're just starting to try to look at this objectively and think, like you said, well, why do I feel offended when they said that? Right. Yeah. Why do I feel angry? Why do I feel happy? Right. I mean, we can, we can go the other way too, right? It's not just, oh yeah. What most people would label as as negative emotions but but all of a sudden you know when you feel really happy or you feel really grateful or you just have this gush of joy go through you you know it's a good time at that point to stop too and say why am i feeling this i like this how right. can i how can i do more of this yeah. right it goes the other way too Absolutely. Well, and again, emotions are a barometer of what's happening in our environment. And the, sort of the downside of emotions, especially those ones we deem negative, is once we're blended with those states, once we're blended with those emotions, we view everything through that lens, right? So if somebody said something that morning that offended us, pissed us off, caused us to feel shame, there's a little piece of that that we're still, we haven't shed the whole thing yet, typically. So from that point on, everybody that looks at you, oh, why are they looking at me like that? You know, we, we start to see everything through that clouded lens of, oh, everyone's out to get me. <laughs> you know, Because we've all had days where it's like, ah, but here's the problem. Remember before we had computers that have the speed we do now, I, I used to have old PCs and like you'd click something and it wouldn't work. And then you click it again. And then you go, oh, well, I'm not going to do that. And you click that. And all of a sudden everything's spinning. You get so overloaded if you don't take that time to process things as they happen. And this is why I'm a huge fan of timeouts. I'm a huge fan of, well, you know, uh, this meeting got, you know, bigger than I thought it would. Can I have five minutes to conduct myself? Or, oh guys, you know what? I hate to interrupt, but I've got to run to the bathroom real quick. I don't care what you need to say to get your space, to get your kind of, my dad used to say, get your head together. Uh, but it's true. It's like, it's about calming down, about finding your center, about asking yourself and those people around you questions. And, you know, 
I think as long as you're not running through the office a hysterical person all the time, I think emotion at, at work is fine. It guides us. It is like, can I use the word barometer again? It's such a good word, you know, of having that indication of how am I feeling towards things? And if you turn the feeling into the thinking, you know, she was concerned that she kept saying, you know, I feel this, I feel that. You, Jason, even said the word feel about 10 times already. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like some people use the word feel, some people use the word think. One is not better or worse than the other one. It does give you an indication into how their brain works, how yeah. they're, you know, what they put forward first. Um, but I think, you know, honoring those feelings, acknowledging them, processing them, and then what do they move you to do? What is the action that comes after that feeling? Yeah, because I mean, the words that people use, you know, from a rapport standpoint, mm. right? I mean, you know, Kathy, if I'm sitting here and, and, and listening to you and you keep saying the words, I feel, Yep. then, you know, again, if I'm, if I'm more emotionally mature and I, I recognize that I'm aware of that word that you're using, then I'm going to want to, you know, mimic that back to you. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to want to say, I feel this way as well, right? right? Because, because if, if you're, if I'm saying think and you're saying feel, we're not, we're not together from a rapport perspective. Right. Or on the, to, to add on to what you just said, if I'm saying, oh, I feel this, I feel that when you want my opinion, you're not going to say to me, what do you think about that? Correct. You're going to say, how do you feel about that? Because I've clearly established that I'm a feeling, you know, and that goes down to the, what is it? I almost said personal farms. That's not right. What is it? Meyer Briggs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Personal farms. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you eat your produce, do you feel or do you think about the squash? Yeah. Are you um, an F or a T? An F or yeah, a T in the Meyer right, Briggs. Exactly. And I think I'm, a, I, I actually don't know. I'd have to look. I think I'm an F, but I, I don't remember. Um, you know, that we just, we have a guiding force and acknowledging that in the other person and validating that. And if we only had thinking people, the world wouldn't work. You know, we have to have the thinkers and the feelers. And I think uh, being adaptive and being emotionally intelligent to fit the situation and to build that rapport with the people around you. I think that's the way to go. Well, and it's funny because I, you know, especially in a lot of the areas where I work kind of from a technical perspective with people that I work with, right? They're, they're very much thinking people. We've got to be rational. We've got to be logical. We've got to think our way through this. And I remember there, 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 there was somebody that I, uh, that I was talking to, and I think his book is even called something like never go with your gut or something like that. Right. Like never trust your gut. And, and that just doesn't sit well with me. Yeah. As I say, so, so I was, I was actually given a a speech uh, at a conference a year ago and I shared this, this example, I'm getting ready to go back down there to do the next one here in October for them. But, um, but but it's kind of like, you know, and, and these are risk management people who, you know, again, analytical, got to think their way through it. And, and the reality is most of the time we can't think our way through it. And so what ends up happening is we're thinking too much and we're not feeling enough. Yeah. Right. And and when you do that, it's, it's like this. There, here, here's a story that I kind of shared, right? It's like, it's like, let's imagine that we're, you know, 50,000 years ago, we're living in a cave. We're all cavemen, cave women. and we're all getting hungry and so we decide you know what we need to send somebody out to go find food for us so that we can eat because we're getting pretty hungry and so you know we 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 look around and we're like yeah you know but it's getting a little dark and there are things out there that are dangers right there's saber-toothed tigers there's bears there's whatever right That, that could eat us and so we look at it and we say, well, let's let's pull up the data for the last, you know, year. And maybe we've got a chart that shows, you know, the 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 roaming patterns of saber-toothed tigers. And we look at it and we say, well, it happens to be, you know, just before sunset. And right now, just before sunset, there's only, you know, a 10% chance that there's going to be a saber-toothed tiger out there. So we we start discussing, debating, blah, 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 blah. And we decide. Okay, we think that now is a good time for us to go out. And so we we pull straws and Bob is the guy who gets selected. Bob. Bob's always the guy that gets selected. And so we say, okay, Bob, you're the guy going. And he's like, you know what? I just don't really feel very good about this. I just have this sick feeling in my stomach like I shouldn't go out there. You know, like he walks up to the edge of the cave and he's like something just doesn't feel right. And we're like, no, 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 Bob, look, we've run the data. We've looked at it. You know, we kind of stuck our head out there, right? You know, we think this is the right decision. 
So we pushed Bob out of the cave. Bob's probably not coming back, <laughs> right? And so it's I like- I liked Bob anyway. I mean- <laughs> I like Bob. Oh, okay. But it, but it, but, it, but it's like, why would we as human beings, right, think that we're so much smarter now? We can think our way through all of this and we throw away millions of years of human instinct. And evolution. Yep. And evolution, which is feeling, right? It's like, if you don't feel it in your gut, don't try to talk yourself out of it by thinking your way through it. Yeah. I love it. And what a beautiful place to end. Yeah. We need the thinkers and the feelers. Well, and we need to, you know, especially for those of you, for those of you that maybe feel all the time, maybe think a little bit more. For those of you that think all the time, maybe feel a little bit more, okay. right? But don't just throw out your feelings and think, well, I'm an evolved human being and I no longer need to feel, right? That's that's like baby stuff. That's where we get most of our answers as well. And yep. where we, we you can actually cut through and not get yourself confused mm -hmm. by overthinking. Yeah, uh, we can. We get, it's a, what analysis paralysis, right? It's sometimes you just have to make a decision and sometimes it goes with you, go with your gut, whether it's gambling on a horse or which job to take or which girl to ask out or which, who to send out to get the uh, saber tooth tiger. <laughs> exactly. I would have totally voted for Bob. Would you? Okay. Oh yeah. Because that's funny. Every time I use a male name as an example, it's always Bob. I always use well, the it's, name a, Bob. it's a good mnemonic name, you that's know, name. Right? whether name. you're dyslexic or not, you can spell Bob. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Very good point. Uh, yes. Anyway, so uh, I'm Kathy Groover. I can be reached at kathygroover.com. And I'm Jason Mefford. I can be reached at jasonmefford.com. So go out, have a great week. Trust your feelings more. Start looking at things more objectively and uh, realize that there is room for emotion in the workplace as well. And uh, we'll catch you on the next episode of the Fire Nerd Podcast. See ya. See ya.